Welcome to the lesson on slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form of a line is going to make it really easy for us to graph the line. The reason is because when we look at the, an equation that's written in slope-intercept form, it automatically will tell us the slope of that line and the y-intercept of that line. Now remember, when we talked about y-intercept earlier, y-intercept is defined as the point where the line crosses or intersects the y-axis. Before we start doing some problems, I would like for you to pause the video and I want you to read through this information before proceeding. So pause the video and read through this information. Okay, now that you've had an opportunity to look through this information, let's look at the exercises. So the very first section it has three graphs, and it says given the slope and y-intercept, graph each line. So look at number one. We know that the slope is four and the y-intercept is negative one. Think of the slope as a set of directions. The y-intercept, treat that as your starting point. So if my y-intercept is negative one, I need to find negative one on the y-axis. So that would be right here. So I'm gonna find that point. This is the y-intercept. Now remember we said that the slope is like a set of directions. Generally, in the slope, a lot of times we have them written as fractions. We're going to rewrite our slope of 4 as an improper fraction. So remember that if you have a whole number or an integer and you want to rewrite it as a fraction, all you have to do is put a 1 under it. Remember that 4 is equivalent to 4 over 1. So in the previous, uh, not the previous lesson, but the lesson before that, when we talked about slope, the initial lesson, we talked about rise over run. So 4 would be the rise, and the 1 would be the run. So from the point, my y-intercept, I'm going to rise 4 units and run 1 unit to get my next point. Now if I rise 4, think about like rising up out of bed. So I'm going to go up. 4, and then when we do the run part, we're going to move to the right. So I'm going to go up 4 and write 1 unit. So up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, write 1. Okay, and then you're going to keep doing that until you fill up your coordinate grid. Now in this case, I can't go, I don't have enough space to go up 4 units and write 1 anymore. But if you'll notice, I could go in the exact opposite direction. So for example, if I go down four, two, three, four, and left one, I end back up where I started with. So I'm gonna go down four again, one, two, three, four, and left one, and I'm gonna put a point right there. Okay, now you want to take a ruler if you have one. I have my pencil box right here that I'm going to use as a ruler. You're going to line up those points that you've just drawn with that with your ruler. There's my line and we're going to include arrows. Now remember when we first talked about graphing linear equations we said that the points on the line are solutions to the equation. So we've identified three solutions to the equation. Of course, they didn't give us an equation, but we've identified three solutions. There are more because I could continue moving up four, right one, up four, right one, and so on, and to generate as many points as I wanted. But I've generated as many points as that will fit on this graph. Now, your turn. I want you to do numbers two and three right now on your own. So, pause the video complete two and three, and then when you come back, we'll discuss. Okay, now that you've had an opportunity to try these two problems on your own, look at what I've done. Again, you may need to pause the video to make sure you get this information down. So with number two, the slope was six or six over one. So what you might have noticed when you got ready to um, first complete this problem, you might have noticed that the y-intercept didn't, with it being at four, you didn't have any room to go up six units and write one unit. So instead, you have to go down six and left one. 
And then number three, the slope is listed as negative one-fourth. So I rewrote it as negative one over four. So that means you go down one unit and then write four units. So we went down one, write four, down one, write four, and so on. All right, so now we're going to look at the next section. So this time we're going to graph the equations using the slope and y-intercept. However, this time the equations, they have given us equations. They didn't tell us the slope or the y-intercept. So when you're dealing with slope-intercept form, first remember up at the top, those equations are written in y equals mx plus b form. m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So in this case, We've got a 3 in place of m, and then we've got a negative 2 where the b should be. So that means that my slope is 3 and my y-intercept is negative 2. So now that I've identified the slope and the y-intercept, all I need to do is follow the same procedure that we, I did before. So start off by using your y-intercept as your starting point. So I'm going to find negative 2 on the y-axis. And plot that point and then my slope is 3 which we want to write that as a fraction remember that 3 is the same as 3 over 1 so that means I'm going to move up 3 units and write 1 so up 3 write 1 1 2 3 1 and plot a point I'm going to do it again 1 2 and I don't have any more room to go up 3, right 1. But remember, I can also go 1, 2, 3, down 3, left 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. So I can do that again. 1, 2, 3, 1, because I have more space. So that point would be there. Again, graph your line. And when you graph that line, do not forget to include the arrows. Okay, so that's number 4. Now you're going to go ahead and I want you to look at 5 and 6 and I want you to complete those problems. Okay, let's check your answers. Move my picture out of the way there. To problems 5 and 6. Uh, so number 5, the slope is 2 thirds already as a fraction so we don't really need to do anything there and the y-intercept is 3. So I literally went up one, two, and then right one, two, three, plotted my point. Then if I go in reverse, so that'd be down two, left three. Then I can go down two, left three again and get that third point. For number six, the slope is five or five over one and the y-intercept is negative three. So I plotted negative three on the y-axis and then I'm gonna go up five, one, two, three, four, five, and then right one and plot my point. I don't have enough room to do a third point for number six, so that's it. All right, now it's your turn. If you had any questions, please remember to contact your teacher. You finish this sheet, you need to upload it, and then you can complete your independent practice. Good luck.